I will go ahead and ask that you mute your phones if you have them, and we'll be getting started as soon as we hear the bell toll. Oh. On my command. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we're going to start our meeting now. We'll call it to order, and we're going to stand with our invocation followed by our pledge. God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving this town and blessing us with it. And, and uh, we thank you for this beautiful weather and pray for tomorrow night's event that we will we'll have good weather and good turnout and, and that our, our actions will be pleasing to you. And um, pray for Gloria tonight if she's uh, is battling through some symptoms. Just pray that you will uh, put your hand upon her and, and heal her. And in those others in, in here in the town that, that uh, may be in the same situation, we pray the same for them. Protect our employees, and, and um, may they know how much we appreciate them. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, our first public comment period is for matters that, that do not appear on the agenda. If you have something you want to share with us, feel free to come forward. You have uh, three minutes to do so, and please state your name and address and fill out a, a form for our clerk, please. Charlene Alexander, 460 Anthony Drive in Tyrone. Um, my request to the council is that you please consider uh, moving up the funding and the project, which is called Far Road Path Widening. I realize that can't happen, you know, in the next year or so. But personally, to me, it's a safety issue, even more so than accessibility. And I'm requesting that you move that project up as soon as possible, and even in front of some of the other paths that we have uh, that are slated to be taken care of. I've spoken with golf cart owners that are on our side, and they are afraid. They know that that's what they use. Many of them have been told not to use the sidewalks. That was not permissible, even though I think Philip says it is. And so they're out there. They're also concerned that there are more and more 15, 16, 17-year-old kids that are going to be driving those golf carts, and they just don't want them out on Far Road when we've got all vehicles and no way to pass them. So that's my request. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, hearing none. Um, is there a motion to approve the agenda? I make a motion that we approve the agenda. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. Um, our first um, uh, matter to discuss will be regarding emergency access to Shamrock Industrial Park. And um, I'm going to ask Brandon to kick us off. Thank you, sir. Uh, the biggest part of this is going to be actually an update on the rezoning restrictions. Uh, just to give you some background, back in July of 2000, uh, council zoned all the properties located in the phase eight of the Shamrock Industrial Park to M2 with conditions. And the conditions were, in, in part, that before any additional building could occur in that phase, that a second entrance or an emergency exit, something along those lines, had to be uh, provided. Um, that entrance never came to fruition, um, and the town since then has held firm on its position that this uh, uh, condition must be met before additional building is allowed. Uh, fast forward to 2008, the council was provided a letter. Now, I don't remember or I, I, I couldn't find exactly what prompted this, but the town received a letter from then Fire Marshal David Scarborough, who has since retired. Uh, this is in June of 2008, and stating in part that it is his my opinion that a second entrance or emergency access road should not be required at this time. We will provide the best possible service under whatever conditions or situations are presented at the time. Council took no action on the zoning conditions at that time. On May 6, 2021, Mr. Scott Moore, who was here tonight, 
who owns a 14-acre parcel in Phase 8 of Shamrock Industrial, petitioned council to re rezone his property from M2 uh, with conditions to M2 so that he could build on the property. After a lengthy discussion, council denied the rezoning. However, Mr. Moore was asked during this meeting if he would be willing to put in the work uh, to communicate with property owners if they would contribute to the outcome. Uh, that was a quote from the uh, minutes from the meeting of May 6, 2021. Mr. Moore stated that he would do that. He was then advised that council had the authority to revisit the rezoning request if he came back in the future with information regarding the inability to create a second exit. Um, I forgot to grab them off my desk tonight, but Mr. Moore did present to me several weeks ago uh, a stack of petition paperwork that, that he had uh, spoken to other property owners in Shamrock Industrial asking um, you know, if they would be willing to contribute to assisting with putting together a, a emergency uh, entrance, and all of them were signed no. I don't recall how many there were, but there were probably, how many, do you remember how many there were, 15 or 20? Yeah, I've got them on my desk. Um, so nobody that he spoke to was willing to, uh, to help contribute to uh, making that happen. Um, he's also, Mr. Moore has also made it clear um, that he doesn't have the financial resources to make the entrance happen on his own. He's further advised us that he has a buyer for the property. I don't know if that's changed. He's, I'm, I'm going to ask Mr. Moore to, to speak in a few. Um, but he can't complete the sale because until the, the, the conditions are lifted. And so um, in order to revisit this um, and, and have it rezoned, he's going to have to go back through the rezoning process. The reason we're here tonight is to, like I said, revisit the action items that you you all asked of Mr. Moore, um, give him the opportunity to show you that he tried to complete those action items and um, get council's appetite for, for moving forward with having Mr. Moore move forward with re reapplying for the rezoning. I'll remind you that since he was here in 2021, a strip of land just over an acre has been transferred, the ownership of it has been transferred to the town. And the piece of property on the other end of that strip of land in Peachtree City has been re, uh, rezoned inside Peachtree City with the condition that they provide a easement for access, emergency access. And it's not to be a permanent road. It's not to be used if, you know, if that road is developed, it's not to be used for... Uh, you know, the train's blocking and people got to get out of there. You know, it's just where it's an inconvenience. It's solely to get emergency vehicles in and out. Um, and that's, of course, the area where, you know, we targeted and asked Mr. Moore, you know, if people would be willing to help contribute to that. I understand at the last meeting I wasn't here, but I understand staff was directed to start working up numbers on that. We are going to be doing that. Um, but I, I wanted to make sure that everybody remembered that that um, parcel does exist, and you know it's something that we are looking at as far as the cost goes. Um, and with that, unless you have any more questions for me, like I said, Mr. Moore is here. Um, if you'd like to have him come up and give you some more details, I think it's important that you know anytime we deal with this issue, we we refer back to you know. Well, what happened when, or when were we told this, or when did we tell a developer what? And you know, we have to go back and look at minutes from whenever. I think it's important that we establish for this meeting, since we're discussing this topic, a little bit of a history lesson uh, with regard to the town telling the developer he was responsible for this second exit because it wasn't to be placed on the taxpayers uh, for that. So I know this is a little bit um, impromptu, but can you share with us? I guess that was in the late 80s. Uh, yeah, I don't remember the timeline on that. I'll do my best, fill, up, fill in where you can. My understanding is that the industrial park was presented that in, in phases and that at some point it was to have a second full, you know, open entrance exit off of Dogwood. 
Um, and at, you know, at, at some point that got approved. That was the way it was supposed to be. Phases one through seven got, got developed. And then somebody within the town said, oh, hold on now. We're, we're starting to get close to phase eight. There's been no movement on this second entrance. And it's my belief, based on just input that I've gotten on this over the years, that the, de the original developer, Mr. Guthrie, went to the property owner that he had targeted for the second interest to go on and was told, no, I'm not selling you my property. Um, I also understand that the original developer at some point in the early 2000s, short, probably shortly after this uh, rezoning was or this condition was placed on the park or phase eight of the park, uh, I believe he went bankrupt. So that was a factor as well. And so now we're at the point where we've got you know, a couple of property owners in phase eight who, you know, can't do anything with their properties. Did I leave anything out? Yeah, it might have been mid, early to mid nineties. But, 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 but a yeah. tenant in there recently said, I've been here since the late eighties. Okay. I, I was the first building to be built. Okay, well. If in 2008, uh, the fire marshal said that he didn't think they needed that extra entrance, why did they not lift the condition at that point? Like I said, I couldn't find what prompted that letter to be written in 2008. I don't, I don't remember, I, I kind of remember a discussion back then because I was at, I was the chief at the time. I was asked at that point what I, what I thought of the matter. And, and I said, well, if, if it's good enough for the fire department, it's good enough for, for us. I mean, you know, it's not ideal, but, you know, if we need to get back there, we'll get back there. I tell a story of, you know, probably around 2000, 2001, I was a young patrolman on duty by myself one day. It was a Sunday. I'll never forget it. I'm patrolling back there, and I go to leave, and the train stopped. I sat for about 45 minutes. The only patrol unit in town, I had to call dispatch and let them know, and if we had a call, the county would have had to come over here. So, you know, it's... Um, that was a long time ago, but I do remember that. So, you know, we we would get back there if we had to, but it, again, it's not ideal. And I should mention, you know, the the fire chief has changed out. We've had a couple of different fire marshals since all of this. I've had new conversations with the new chief and the new fire marshal, and I put it in my staff report. They stand behind that 2008 letter. So, if that if that helps tonight, so. Um. Was that what you were looking for, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, I just, uh, it, it seems like anytime we discuss this topic, we, we're scrambling to look for um, who said what when. Right. Or who did what when. And it would be easy to say that this is <coughs> the town's fault or this is the developer's fault, but it, it's probably a combination of uh, yeah. knowingly and unknowingly uh, making mistakes. Yeah, the best history we have on it, I think, are those minutes from July 20th, 2000, when the conditions were placed. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that was a good faith effort on the town to hold the developer accountable to what to having the secondary roadway. And, you know, things kind of went downhill from there. If this were a neighborhood, um, what would be done then? Let's say it's a we required a neighborhood to have a second entrance, uh, and an HOA was never formed. What would be the what would be the answer? Tough one. If an HOA isn't formed and there's no, that's you know, the situation we're in. Yeah, right? it's a business association or anything yeah. of that nature. Can't force that to be you know uh, created. Patrick, you look like you want to say something. Yeah. On. One thing I want to make sure isn't lost in all of this is that the property owner, the current property owner, did purchase the property with this condition on the property at the time. So right. um, he should have had, if he either had actual no, no, notice of the, 
of the condition or he should have known about it. Understood. Thank you. Uh, does anybody else want to touch on this a little bit? Yeah, I, I do. I think regardless of who was responsible or who wasn't responsible, I think we've got to get past that, forgetting about who the uh, the complainant or the applicant is at this point in time. I think um, for me, I'm going to sleep a lot better knowing that we've made some sort of effort to have a uh, an access road to get emergency vehicles in there. If the county or whatever, they decide that they don't want to go through there or use them, which I don't see why they wouldn't, that's on them. But I know our police officers will respond. Uh, but I, I think we need to move forward with this and do whatever's necessary in order to uh, create that, that pathway there. And we were blessed to have Peachtree City give us that easement on their side of the property, and I think we should take full advantage of that. And whatever process we need to do at this point, I think we need to move forward with it. Can we put up a gate, kind of like for crab apples, or just for? Um, oh, it'll yeah, without it'll, a doubt, it'll definitely be gated. For just and only emergency. yeah, first responders and our public works staff would be the only people with the key or the um, code. Patrick, I asked this question for obvious reasons. Even though Peachtree City gave us that easement for emergency vehicles, can they take it back? I mean, once once an easement's been granted, it's, it's usually in per perpetuity. Um, we would have to deed it back to them, basically. Okay. Do we have a deeded easement? I don't yeah, we, we don't have a deeded easement uh, exactly, and it's not Peachtree City's easement. It's actually an easement that is on HOA-owned land, so the developer agreed to that easement. So it's a it's an HOA easement, but we don't have deed to it, and it's and it's and it belongs to the Crestwind HOA. My point is, if we construct or somebody constructs that access, that path or road, whatever you want to call it. Can that be blocked off to emergency vehicles? The Peachtree City. Side. I would think that before we do anything to construct any sort of path through there, that we would make sure we have an easement if we don't have one currently, and that that easement would prevent any block anybody but us from controlling access across that, that route. Okay, but, the, but the history there is when Peachtree City was giving the neighborhood developer the rezoning, it was con a condition was placed on it that we would be given an easement, is that the right yeah. term, in that situation? We have copies of minutes from when Peachtree City, so they had to annex that piece of property first from us. So it was annexed. It was a piece of property. It was within the town. It was, de it was annexed into Peachtree City, and the condition of the annexation and rezoning was that this easement be granted. So we'll, yes, before we do what we have to do to build anything, we will definitely secure what we need to secure. Right. But let's be clear that it's, it's if it's a condition of their rezoning in Peachtree City, if they do not provide us with an easement, Hard to do. That would be up to Peachtree City to enforce that because it's their zoning. Okay. Anybody else have anything to add? Does anybody? Would anybody like to hear from Mr. Moore? Would you uh, like, Councilor? Uh, am I required to put a time limit on? No, I mean he, he can speak for as long as you want him to speak. All right, Mr. Moore, you're welcome to come forward. I, I just want to get this behind us one way or the other. I'm, you know, I've got some good people that want to uh, purchase it. They want to uh, develop the property. Um, you know, and 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 I did know when I bought the property that the, the thing was on it, but also Guthrie knew didn't have a way to put a second in exit out before he even did it too. So it's, you know, I bought the property hoping, because uh, I've been coming to twenty to Tyrone for 25 years. I worked over here 
every day. Uh, and I wanted to build my shop up there for my trucks and all, and that's why I bought it. And I was hoping that I would be able to get it worked <coughs> out to where, I mean, I bought it in good faith, and I knew that the moratorium was on it when I bought it. But I was told that we could work together and get it worked out, and that's what I done. And, um, you know, and I just want to get it behind us where we can just move on. I, I just, you know, it's been drug out a long time. That's just how I feel about it. And Brandon, they, they all been super, super good. They've helped me as much as they can. I've done everything y'all asked. I've got, I went around to the people, you know, and asked. Nobody was willing to, you know, saying, well, if we can't use it, we're not, we're not going to pay for it, you know. So and that's basically how everybody that I talked to, that's what they said. So that's, that's all I got, you know. I just would ask for y'all's blessing, and hopefully we can get this behind us and make that look like a good piece of property back on there. Any questions? If, if we wanted to lift the, the um, <coughs> moratorium. Would we be able to do that, or is it a it's, whole long process? It's yeah, it's a, it's a process. It's not a moratorium. It's a it's a zoning condition. So, uh, Mr. Moore would have to go back through the rezoning process. He'd have to reapply for rezoning. We'd have to advertise it. There's a public hearing process in front of public planning commission, and in front of you all for final approval. So probably 2024. No, 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 no. If 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 you guys have an appetite for this, and and you know, depending on the outcome of tonight. If Mr. Moore is willing to start the application process next week, we can get it done in eight weeks, something like that. I think we need to do something. I don't know what, what, what are you going to say? I, I agree. I, I think it's time that we do. If you look at uh, the rock quarry, it's been there since 1946. Yeah. I had one way in and one way out. Well, what I would need to hear from the council is some sort of motion, if if you so desire, to acknowledge that the applicant's actions have been reasonable, to get that, to get some buy-in on the second entrance, and to then allow authorize him to begin the process for for rezoning. And would it be faster to go through that lifting zoning, or to get this easement stuff handled? Well, it's it's a it, it's two different. Those are two different animals. The, the first one is but either one's a solution. Correct? They're both a solution for him, but I think the old the best. Well, the only real solution for him is for him to re go back to the rezoning, so that he can he has the hope of getting his condition lifted off that. Secondary to that would be the town taking action on trying to make a an emergency entrance exit for for fire and police vehicles on that strip of property that we have and the uh, the uh, easement on the Peachtree City side. So it's, it's really two different steps. Is phase eight nothing but his property? There's three or four property owners back there, right? No, it's just two. Just two? Okay. I have 14 and a half acres and I have the green. Um, I think everybody in their, in their right mind would say we need to get a second entrance. I don't think that's even debatable. Uh, we all want safety. We all want, you know, that, that taken care of. It's just, you know, I think we need to be discussing cost and who's bearing it. And, and um, I, I think that all needs to be discussed. What we're trying to achieve, I think we got some more things we have to, details we have to hammer out. I'll just note at the at the last meeting we did, uh, council did direct staff to the basically establishing that road, getting numbers, making sure that that's included in our in our uh, budget for this upcoming fiscal year. So that's something that we've been directed to move towards. So that's that one's already moved. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to make a motion to have staff. Um, prepare a rezoning petition for the properties. Is my going in the right direction for that? I, I, it would need to be a motion recognizing Mr. Moore's efforts to okay. obtain a second entrance on his own and then authorizing him to to file an application for rezoning at the property to remove the condition. Okay. 
So I'd like to make a motion that Mr. Moore has um, completed and fulfilled the obligation on his part, what council had asked him last year to do so. Um, and because of those results, um, you know, it was unfavorable for the rest of the, the rest of the uh, participants to be part of that thing. So because of your efforts, I'd like to make a motion that we, um, you know, that, that you go ahead with the uh, rezoning of that particular property um, going from M2 with conditions um, to M2 without the conditions. Baker, did you get that? All right. I we, second. We have a motion to second any discussion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. All right. Our next item is uh, an annual fire impact fee report. And Philip? <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so on January 5th, uh, we approved a uh, resolution, a uh, transmittal resolution to the Department of Community Affairs to review the fire impact fee for uh, this upcoming year. Um, the Department of Community Affairs approved that fire impact fee report, which is on page 21 of y'all's uh, packet. Um, that fire impact fee report has been integrated back into our capital improvement element and short-term work program, which is part of the comprehensive plan. Um, so we would like to present a resolution to officially adopt this amendment to the comp plan to accept the county's fire impact fee report. Are there any questions? Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we officially adopt both the amendment to our comp plan as well as the county's, whoops, lost it. Oh, I'm. Did I move it on you? I am sorry. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. I am awful at that. Sorry. Need to start over now. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. So I make a motion that we officially adopt both the amendment to our comp plan as well as the county's fire impact fee report. I second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. I'll just have you all from now on do what Patty does and say, hit it, Brandon. Brandon <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Um, the buy board, buy board purchasing cooperative. Okay. So our purchasing policy allows purchases, as you all know, under state and federal contract pricing as a means to streamline our purchasing process. And we've, we've used those uh, contracts uh, successfully in the past for, uh, to get products and services at lower pricing. Um, uh, we've also, uh, but under Georgia law, local governments can also treat certain purchasing cooperative contracts like state contracts. Buy board is one of those uh, types of uh, cooperatives. They're a large government uh, co-op, a matter of fact. Um, they do meet the requirements under OCGA 36-69A-4. But in order to participate in the program, we have to join the program um, and that requires a signing of an agreement. And as you all are aware, council approval is required to sign an agreement. I did send the, the, uh, the attached agreement to legal for review. I didn't hear anything back from them. Um, so, okay. Okay, so we'll, if you approve it tonight, we'll have, we'll have legal revisit it and then we'll go from there. That's all I have. Is there a cost on this? There's no cost to join, no. There's no cost. All right. Is there a motion? I make a motion that we uh, approve the town's membership in the buy board purchasing co-op with the conditions uh, upon uh, legal approval. I'll second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. That means it's pointless for me to sign it. For now, yes. Or if you want to sign it, then we'll hold on to it until legal approval, one or the other. Um, but we all know that we got to get Dennis or Patrick to give us the go ahead first. All right. Next item. All right. Next item. I, I didn't realize until uh, it was too late that I did not do a cover sheet for that. So I apologize for that. But you have in front of you a. Um, 
a quote from a company called ClearGov, and this is the reason we just did the buy board thing. Uh, ClearGov is a, they produce a very robust kind of an industry leading um, um, budgeting software platform. We did budget for this purchase this year. It was approved. I believe it was $30,000 that we budgeted. Um, we started looking at options. Um, ClearGov, Sandy and I both kind of knew about anyway because they're, they're, they're a big company. They're, they have a great offering. You know, one of the things that we're looking for right now, as you're, you're all aware, we do budgeting on spreadsheets. Have been for years. Um, it works fine until it doesn't. Spreadsheets, you know, the formulas in spreadsheets break. And, you know, we're sending out spreadsheets to department heads and they send them back. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's time consuming and it's old, it's kind of the old style of doing things. Um, this software is cloud-based. So at the beginning of budget season, uh, Sandy would, would kind of release the, the next year's budget out to the department heads. They'd be able to log into their account. They can work on their budget and see their old budget side by side as they're working on their new budget. Um, another uh, very nice feature of ClearGov is it has a public facing option um, where citizens will be able to go on our website and they'll be able to see, we'll backlog, backload, if this is approved, probably five years worth of budget data and then everything going forward will be there. But citizens can see in real time what our budget looks like. They'll see what was approved this year. Mid-year, they'll be able to see how much we've spent and what areas. Um, so it, 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 it helps a lot as far as the transparency. Right now, for transparency, we're putting our budget book out on the, on the internet. And, you know, you pull up this giant PDF document of spreadsheets and you kind of go through it. And, you know, some of it's easy to understand, some of it's not. ClearGov puts together a a very robust online presentation uh, that citizens can see. It also helps internally because it's very visual for us as well. Um, there is a, another component of it is a, um, um, lost my thinking, a project tracker. So right now I'm, I've, I've done, here in the last several months, we've put a spreadsheet on our website that tracks all of our current projects. Um, built into their system is, is a feature that's also public facing where you can look at a map, see dots on a map, you click the dot, it pulls up that project, it shows the budget for that project, the status of that project. Very nice feature. So ClearGov is part of the BuyBoard co-op, so that was one of the reasons that BuyBoard was on there, but um, their pricing through uh, BuyBoard is uh, the upfront pricing is twenty seven thousand four ninety five. Like I said, we've we've got um, thirty thousand budgeted. That that price is under option two, so that includes a five thousand eight hundred and fifty dollar one time setup fee, and then the annual subscription is twenty one thousand six forty five. So going forward, it's going to be twenty one thousand twenty one until something new comes along. Until something new, or you know, if there's, I think I forget what the. Uh, what the agreement is, but there's a um, there is a, a built-in annual increase of Andy. Do you remember what that was off the top of your head? Um, let me see. That investment up there. Is that where do you see investment? Quotes provided in separate attachments. Maybe it's in, I'm sorry, maybe it's, it's been a while since we've put this in here and looked at it. It's probably on that missing cover sheet. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Touche. I'm just teasing. Hey, I'm usually pretty good about those, so uh, I, I do apologize for that. <laughs> let me, let me find, I know it's in here. Because um, we need to know that. I want to say it's 3% a year. As I'm scrolling through this, you can see some of the visual screens are very nice. The public will only be able to see what we put on there, though. In well, other words, they're not going to be able to... I'm assuming, like, during this time, budget time, 
um, department heads are going back and forth with Sandy and you and so on, and things are being changed all the time. Right. What they're what the public's going to see is uh, published approved budgets. Okay. That's <laughs> what they'll go. see. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. And as the budget year progresses, they'll see as we spend money, they'll they'll see that tracking there. Makes sense. Um, I'm for anything that makes your job easier. I love this. Um, but my question is, there was a place in there that said it may take one or two employees to get this going or use it, or is it going to mean that we have to? The upfront, there is there is a loading period where we're, we have to send them information. They, they assign a team to us to get everything implemented. Um, we're going into this understanding that it's not going to be ready for this budget season. This budget, once it's approved, will be loaded into the system and we'll manage it going forward. But it's about a 60-day onboarding time. Who has to do all that? You? Or no, they, they assign somebody. We, we have to help. We have to send them the data that we want up. So, like, say our past five years of budgets, we'll send we'll send those. Um, and there will be questions that they have of us that we'll have to spend time answering. But the bulk of the work is on them. I don't know why I don't remember this, and I don't know why I don't have it right in front of me. I want to say it is a three percent built-in increase every year. Um. Let me give me a second. Let me look up. Uh, that would be three percent on the twenty-seven four ninety-five. Right. <laughs> no, it'd be three percent on the twenty-one. Oh, I'm sorry. On the twenty-one. I'm okay. sorry. Yeah. Um. And if I weren't trying to find it so quickly, I know I'd be able to put my <laughs> hands on it. But I do know that it was there was something about that in there. Let me find what I said. Let's see here. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> okay, here it is. This is the service order that I sent Dennis. This is the this is where we are. So um that pricing is valid until April 21st. Initial period rate increase 3% per year during the initial service period of the annual subscription fee shall automatically increase by this amount. And then after that, there it goes up to six. After the, the original term, and I'm looking for that term. This is a... Let me see, subject to the termination. So after the first year, you have the 3% rate increase. And then after that, if we continue with them, it goes up to 6 But just for the first year, it's 3%. After the first. So their second year, they'll get 3 Correct. And then it'll go, it can go up to 6 after that. And can you stop it at any time if you don't? Yeah, we're not locked in. All right. Does everybody, anybody have a motion for? Have a motion. When uh, just one more when when this wouldn't be this budget year it would be the next budget year. That will be when we yes next fiscal year next this time next year is when we'll start using it to actually build our budget. Okay. We'll continue this year with the old way. Once that budget's approved, we will upload that data into the so system. For the twenty three twenty four budget year, right? We're we'll be able to actually twenty four twenty five twenty five budget year was it is right. Okay. Right. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to make a motion that we approve the purchase of the new budgeting software from ClearGov in the amount of $27,495. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Next item.
is the administrative policy regarding fund fund balances. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, as you all may remember, back in February of 2019, during a budget retreat, uh, we talked about a policy for for fund balance, reserve fund balance. And council's statement at the time was that they would like to set a policy to hold on to 40% 40 of reserves with a goal of 50%, meaning if we have 24 months of reserves, we look at what our operating funds are and we, we save 40% of that for emergencies, but the goal being 50%. That's kind of what we've been operating from, but a official written adopted fund balance policy has not been adopted up to this point. Um, so we've just been operating off of that council action ever since then. Um, I have drafted a policy. Um, it is attached to, in your, it is in your booklet for your review. Uh, a lot of what I've put into this policy is based off of GFOA recommendations uh, uh, and sample policies. Um, the GFOA recommends a reserve balance of two to three months. The town, you know, if, if we set our, our goal at 50%, that's, it, it is legal and it's also very healthy and it's very doable. Um, as you'll remember from um, our annual audit report a couple months ago, we are at 27, 20, 24, 20, 21, I'm sorry, 21, all these numbers are running together, 21 months of reserve. Um, so that's that's a very healthy reserve. So um, so anyway, this this is an official policy. It covers more than just reserve, though. Um, so it's going to cover non-spendable fund balances, restricted fund balances, committed fund balance, assigned fund balance, unassigned fund balance. Um, we've never had a policy that covers all of this before. I hope you've had time to re review it. I have. Um, here to answer any questions you may have. I did get legal feedback on this. They <clears throat> they didn't suggest any changes to what we had submitted. So if you have any questions, I'm ready to answer them. Sandy, hopefully you can follow me here. I had a conversation with, I know I did with Brandon. I can't remember if I did with you too, but we... Sometimes when we say we're going to spend money on whatever, we say, well, where is that money going to come from? And we say it's going to come from reserves. And that sort of has this connotation of, of well, we got to pull it from uh, savings or that's a danger uh, but, uh, fund, that, that kind of thing. Will this allow us to use different terminology to say surplus? we would be pulling this from surplus instead of from reserves. Does that make sense? And will the auditors allow us to use that terminology? Yes, I had a conversation with our, um, our auditor yesterday, and she, she suggested some terminology that we can use that Brandon had already put this policy in place, and you already had it in your packet, so we couldn't go back and really change what she said. What she, what she suggested we use was really kind of long and convoluted, and I don't know that it made sense to me. I don't know that it would have made sense to you. Probably not. I, I guess so, I'm just so, saying. Yes, if, I think the auditors are always going to use their own accounting terminology. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that you, that you can't use your own. I mean, in the financial book that they put together, it's going to have the correct accounting terminology. Okay, so so if we pass this, can the six months worth be called reserves, and then the rest be called surplus on reserves? So we say, well, what are we, what are we using to pay for this? Well, we're we using the surplus. Yeah. Well, and, that, and that's kind of exactly what the policy does. It, it takes if you look at. Uh, the last page of the policy, and it talks about surplus fund balance. The last, the last paragraph in the policy, a fund balance will be considered a surplus if it is over 50% of operating expenses. Surplus funds will be considered for new expenditures with an emphasis on infrastructure needs, capital improvements with a long-term benefit, 
and debt reduction. A portion of surplus funds may be invested pursuant to the town's investment policy. We already do that. And staff will notify council when a budget presentation includes the proposed use of surplus funds and a majority vote in favor is required. So reserve will henceforward will always mean the amount of money that we're holding aside, that 50% of operation funds for a rainy day. You know, our, we, we can't meet re revenue requirements. The economy goes down. Um, God forbid we have a, na a natural disaster we have to respond to, something along those lines. That is always going to be, when we say reserve balance, that's what that's always going to mean. Surplus is always going to mean anything over and above that for this policy. Anybody have any questions? I have a motion. I make a motion that we approve the new administrative policy governing fund balances. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Next item. So the next item is consideration of an update to Ordinance 2 47, which is the order of business. Uh, this is just a uh, housekeeping item. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was I was uh, reviewing some of our ordinances, and I noticed that in Section 2-47, where it talks about the order of council business, that what we had on the books didn't match what we do on our council agendas, which is the, the inclusion of two public comment periods. Um, and so brought that to legal's attention and I had them go ahead and just just prepare an ordinance that matches what we actually do. And that's what they've presented for you. Now the question has come up, the mayor had asked this question a while back um, and we've talked about it internally. Uh, item number five, no, I'm sorry. Item number four, the first public comment period, um, it was asked, you know, currently, that is reserved for items that are not on the agenda. Um, the question has been, you know, can we, can both public comment periods be about anything? And according to my research and feedback from legal, the answer I believe is yes, it can be about anything. So if you all want to allow both public comment sections to be about anything the public wants to talk about, then, then that's, uh, that's, that's fine to do. And I believe the version that's in your book, no, you have the original and the second. So on the red line version that's on your screen right now, it still says under item number four, public comments for non-agenda items. If you all wish to pass this where it's just two standard public comment periods, then we can strike four non-agenda items. That's up to you all. I, I will explain my my thinking on that if somebody comes i mean can, don't count public hearing items because that's that's different but if somebody comes about an agenda item they just have to sit there until we've we've discussed it voted done and then they come up and complain or support while we can't respond to them if ahead of the meeting um i think the public deserves the, the right to at least come up in anticipation of what we're going to discuss and tell us their tell us their opinion. That's always felt awkward to me that we don't allow them to do that. I understand why, because we can't respond to them about it. But I just think it's, it's more effective uh, if we allow them to speak about agenda items. We just have to resist the urge to respond. I, would, I, <clears throat> I personally agree with that. Um, I don't see any reason why they shouldn't be able to voice their, their opinions prior to us discussing it. Uh, I was, obviously, we're not going to be able to respond to them like the mayor said, but um, they, they should have their, their, their venue in order to speak. Okay. I think we're asking for a motion to approve the the ordinance as submitted with the one change to strike under section 2-47 number 4 for non-agenda items with that one change 
Anybody have that motion? I make a motion that we um, that we update and change our ordinance 2-47 order of business that includes the first, number four, the first uh, public comment period to include anything, uh, n not just matters that do not, um, that are on the, that do not uh, come on the, uh, the agenda. So they can speak about anything that they'd like. Okay. A second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, next item is reserve police officer uh, resolution. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm coming here tonight to ask your consideration uh, to approve resolution 2023-05, which would allow us to include our reserve police officers on the town's workers' compensation plan. Currently, they are not eligible and would not be covered if they become injured while on duty working for us. So the staff recommendation would be that you approve this resolution and funding is available in the current budget as the result of us not being at full staff for the entire year. Any questions? Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve <coughs> resolution 2023-05 add the reserve officers to the town of Tyrone's workers' compensation policy. Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. And finally, the jetpack trailer. Thank you. I know you normally save Scott best for last, but you'll have to deal with me. Uh, <laughs> the uh, consideration for you this evening is a uh, request for purchase of a jetpack trailer through Sourcewell. Uh, the Jetback trailer is a Vermeer product. Um, its, uh, it's, it's purpose is essentially what it sounds like. It's essentially a very, very, very fancy and high powered uh, pressure, almost like a, pre like a pressure washer. It has a large tool on the end that puts out water at an uh, incredibly high uh, velocity and pressure. We can use that to clean out uh, manholes, culverts, um, you name it. It also has a large vacuum associated with it that um, can vacuum up water and um, out of a culvert. We saw a demonstration just a week or two ago, and it really was quite incredible. We were able to get uh, the, the, the guy really got his hands dirty. He actually cleaned out an entire culvert under Valleywood Road. We didn't think the demo was going to actually do, a, he was going to actually clean out an entire culvert, but he did um, uh, very quickly. Uh, this is something that would come out of the sewer enterprise fund. We'd use it for sewer maintenance. It's one of those items that will really help us with that, and it will also help us with stormwater maintenance. Um, staff recommends awarding uh, to Vermeer through Sourcewell. The quote amount was $53,530.19, um, and staff recommends approval. Philip, the question that I have, um, and... I've seen these operate before, and we've been, the town has been looking at these things for even when I was with the town at right. that time. Um, the one question that's going to come out, the, the residue that's being taken from these sewers or uh, culverts or whatever the case may be, where does that get discharged? Well, yes, we, so it gets held into a tank and can be discharged where uh, in an appropriate location. So um, typically if it's just water, if it's like a culvert and we're trying to pull, because what he'll do is he'll take water out of the culvert in order to blast out stuff. That water can just be put back downstream as long as it's kind of filtered through. But if we're sucking up anything more than that, and especially for sewer, of course, we will, that'll be held in the tanks and we'll discharge that in an appropriate location. Yep. Because that's going to be an issue. Yes, sure. The... The invoice says that all warranties would have to go through the manufacturer rather than the dealer. What warranties do we get from the manufacturer? That's a good question. Um, I, I would have to I would have to get back to you on what that warranty looks like. I don't have that information in front of me. I'd have to get with Scott. Okay. 
Any other questions? So it's a it's a Vermeer is the manufacturer, but we're buying it through the company of Sourcewell. Sourcewell is where it was um, is where the the contract amount was put out. Sourcewell was uh, put on by the state. I it's believe a, it's a co-op, kind of like what there we go. Okay, yeah, what so, so we're like purchasing that. it through that because yes. I know Vermeer does have a location north of us here. Okay. Your motion. I make a motion that we uh, re that that we award the two Vermeer through Sourcewell um, in the amount of fifty three thousand five hundred and thirty dollars and nineteen cents to um, purchase the uh, CV fifty seven three GT jet vac trailer unit. <coughs> I'll second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right, our uh, second public com comment period is for matters that we have discussed or any ma any other matter that you would like to discuss. Uh, once again, you have three minutes and same rules apply. Okay, are there any uh, staff comments? I have a couple. Anybody else have anything? Uh, I'll start with, I uh, want to just thank, thank uh, the Chief. Today we hosted the uh, District 10 Georgia Association of Chiefs of Police uh, training event, uh, a quarterly event, monthly event. We hosted the training and also the GACP executive board meeting uh, was held in here this morning. We had probably 50 or 60 police chiefs, command staff members from across the region here this morning in Tyrone. So. Uh, Good turnout. Uh, it was good to, to see some old friends this morning, but uh, Randy and his team did a great job hosting that. We're very proud to be able to have a facility to host things like that now and to bring, you know, regional uh, entities like that or uh, statewide, at rather, entities like that in for uh, important meetings like that and training. So thank you for hosting that. Thanks for making that happen. You guys did a great job. Um, Want to mention that, uh, remind everybody that tomorrow night from 5.30 to 7.30 at Shamrock Park, we have the Spring Market and Jazz in the Park. The music will be provided by the Sandy Creek High School Jazz Band. There will be food trucks um, as well and other vendors. That's, again, 5.30 to 7.30. And then um, pickleball courts are back uh, under construction again, thankfully. Not, not a lot of, of progress made this week, but... Um, they, we were told, you know, last week that they'd be, they'd be uh, working again starting Wednesday. I went out there yesterday morning. I uh, was happy to see the, uh, a representative from the contractor and the, uh, one of their subs, the, the grading sub, A. Abbey, were out there. They were talking about the plan, and uh, the uh, gentleman from A. Abbey was there. He, he moves their equipment, so he was going to get equipment moved, and this morning, equip, new, the, the new equipment was out there, larger machines so they can move some of this concrete. Um, and then there was some communication today about some uh, storm stormwater drainage pipe that they were going back and forth on, and they, they got that solved. So um, hopefully we'll see a lot of movement here going forward, and uh, they still have a uh, tentatively they'll be ready to pour some quartz in May. So that's, that's what we're hoping for. And that's all I had tonight. Any other staff comments? Any council comments? Yes, I have something. Um, on Saturday, we have a couple of events. Uh, the car wash is going to be at the museum from 10 to 2. So while your car is being washed, we hope that you'll tour the museum. We have some new things. And also, um, Crossroads Christian School is having... A, a run and uh, vendors and food trucks, different things at the Shamrock Park Saturday also, and I think it would be nice for the community to see it. Don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you were afraid I was going to ask Don't that. Ask. <laughs> All right. I thought we had that on our, let's see. I thought it was on the, on the uh, recreation page, but I'm not seeing it right now. I, I have something I'd like to add as well. Um, 
we've really, really, as we go along, as everybody knows that we've created a downtown development authority here in, uh, in Tyrone. Um, and it's, we're moving forward. It is a good thing. Uh, last year, everybody realized we had the DDA sponsor the First Friday events. They were very popular. People responded very well to them. Uh, we had a great time and a great uh, outcome, and we're doing that again this year. Uh, starting May 5th is going to be our first, first Friday. Uh, June 2nd, July 7th, August 4th, and September 1st will be the uh, subsequent other first Fridays that we have. Um, they're all being held at Shamrock Park. Um, so we invite everybody to come and join us and enjoy. Uh, it's a great evening. There's no cost. We do have food vendors there. We've got uh, other vendors that are there. Um, and everybody seems to really like it, and it turns out to be a good thing. Um, I also want to mention that the DDA at our meeting on Monday has approved uh, the RFQ for our partner in the old firehouse project that we're going to be doing. Um, we're hoping that in a few weeks the RFQ will be advertised, and um, it is our hope to have an applicant hopefully by the end of July. Am I being conservative with that? Okay. <laughs> uh, there will be many hurdles that we're going to have to deal with, but many decisions that need to be made. But if all goes well, we're hoping that a start date of October of this year to start renovating that building and getting that uh, tenant or partner in there. Uh, last Thursday, Jenny Mount and I attended a training class it, sponsored by the GMA, which is the Georgia Municipal Association. Uh, we were up in Athens and it was entitled Advanced Downtown Development. Uh, it was an eight-hour class. There's four different speakers. We covered items such as having the correct tools in your toolbox, having clarity and unity in the purpose uh, and your goals, having a vision and sticking to that vision, having a supporting elected body, uh, applying and utilizing various grants and loans. Um, it was fabulous. Uh, the speakers, it, it is amazing to sit and see pictures and listen to these speakers who have had years and years and years of experience in the downtown development. To see the transition and the transformation of blighted properties and uh, vacant buildings and turning them into vibrant uh, new businesses and parks, um, it, it really is exciting to see that, at least for myself. Uh, most of these projects, as I said, have been have been driven by people who have 20, 25 years in that type of business in the downtown development authorities, and they're very well versed on how to get loans and how to, you know, you know, apply for grants. Um, the thing that's amazing, as Jenny and I sat there, we couldn't help but realize uh, because of the efforts of Philip and Brandon and, and our great legal staff, Ali Cox, um, how far we've come along with no experience at all. I mean, this is all new for us, getting off the ground. And I know Philip has had some experience and so has Brandon, but certainly not 15, 20, 25 years of experience. So we're moving uh, along very well. And from our Madam Secretary, uh, Sierra, and the staff members, I'd like to thank both of you guys for all your efforts that you've done for us. And uh, I think it's going to be a great thing for Tyrone once we get this first, this first project on its way. I think it's going to make a big difference in our town. Thank, Thank you, sir, for that report. Uh, any other council comment? Okay. In the area of executive session, uh, we have read the minutes from the executive session on April 26th, so I'd like to... A April, what did you say? It says April 6th. I thought that was what I said. Uh, not 26th, April 6th. Uh, is there a motion to approve the executive session minute from April 6th, 2023? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and uh, no other need for executive session. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned. Sorry about that. <laughs>